And that's John and Becky from We Are For Good. If you are not familiar with their podcast, you need to be because it's amazing. I was on it as a guest and I feel super honored because I have listened to it, I feel like every week since I was on it. Um, they are marketers, they are strategists, they are website designers, they are storytellers, they do consulting, they are just brilliant, joyful people. And so with that, I'm super excited to bring them on, John and Becky. Our head is We're not going to get through the door after this. So that was the nicest Thank intro you, Dana. ever. That's Hi, everybody. Awesome. It's good to see all y'all. We're yeah, here in I'm, Edmond, Oklahoma. In the heartland. The snow is melted from the vortex, and we are here <laughs> yes. to talk about websites. So fun. I love it. I love it. Is anybody in the chat? I want to know, A, where are you tuning in from? I do see Michaela's here from Washington, D.C. And is anybody no. wearing green with us? Did anybody get festive? And if you're not festive... Can. Today. You cannot oh, get Ashley John to break from his uh, Steve Jobs black t-shirt on <laughs> any day. Hey, Ashley, it's right here. Okay. I got it on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep, Becky's wearing green. I love it. Okay, we got New Jersey. We have some California. Oh, Boca Raton, Florida, after my own heart. Dayton, Ohio. Amazing. Oh, oh, we do have somebody wearing green. I love it. If you're not wearing green today please come back on St. Patrick's Day in week three and wear some green because I would love that personally. <laughs> uh, Indiana. Okay, this is awesome. So I don't want to take, I am a very like tactical get to the point kind of person because I think there's a lot of webinars that just fill it with fluff. So I want to go straight to you guys. <laughs> you have an amazing presentation today and I'll just kind of let you take it over and I'll be here to moderate some questions. So Dana, with that said, if you have questions, we're here for you. Drop your questions in the chat. This is your time. I think sometimes people hesitate from asking a question. Ask your question. It doesn't matter if you think it sounds silly. I bet you somebody else wants to ask that same question because I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> with that said, in the comment section, um, doo -doo -doo, let me pull it up. They have put together this incredible worksheet so i'm going to put it in the comments There's no green on it i'm just going to forewarn you i'm more of a blue people john's more of a blue person but it's okay we're very on brand blue and black sorry yeah. folks i know that's okay i just put it there there's a bitly link you can see it at the top <laughs> we're getting we're getting text. Text. thanks for being on everybody who's here yes i love it okay with that said your worksheet is in the comment section john and becky i'm going to let y'all take it away. You are too kind. I don't, it's so awkward getting talked about, but thank you for that ridiculously amazing introduction. It feels like such an honor to be here with you guys. We like are complete geeks and love geeking out on marketing for nonprofits. Huge dorks, love marketing, love the storytelling, and you'll be able to see that we love the visual and 100%. how to make that translate through digital. So hopefully you'll get something out of this and a whole bunch of some things. So we'd love to get to know you a little bit. I'm John, this is Becky, obviously, if you didn't know that. <laughs> but so Becky hired me 20 years ago as her graphic design intern. She was this amazing director of marketing for the OSU Foundation, which was on the verge of a billion dollar fundraising campaign. So if you can imagine that. And I'm this lowly intern that wore a tie to the interview and we became like fast <laughs> friends. And we've worked together ever since we're like brother and sister, basically. Yeah, we don't say that we're work spouses anymore because it creeps people out. So, <laughs> yeah. but we're just, we're ridiculous idealists. We're marketers disguised as fundraisers. We spent our whole lives in nonprofit, deeply passionate about causes, making a difference, putting kindness in to the world. We'd love to use our podcast to just infuse empathy and learning. So you're going to get a lot of that flavor in here. But we want to dive in to websites today. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about the podcast before we Yeah, get in? let's talk a little bit about the podcast. So we are We Are For Good with Julie, our producer. She's over here too. So we, you know, made the jump after being in frontline fundraising for 15, 20 years. And because we love this space, we wanted to pour into people on the front lines. And it is like our passion to just pass along the best tips and knowledge and open you up to conversations that we get to have. So our podcast drops three times a week and we'd love to see you there. We have a blast um, and amazing episode actually dropped today on AI also. So hop over there, scan the QR code or come find us. We'd love to hang out with you on that. 
Okay, so you've taken the first step. You are here. Give yourself a pat on the back because like refreshing our websites is just not something I think that people intuitively think about doing um, on a regular basis. And really, if we're trying to train people to come to our front porch, you know, our website is our digital brand for the organization. You want to keep the house clean. You want to yeah. keep it interesting for people. So we're going to walk through these 10 quick steps to help you make your website irresistible to donors. And it is going to be interactive. So <laughs> I hope you have another tab open because you're about to do a little research, but not much. Okay, so first disclaimer, we love a good disclaimer. Try some stuff. What is the fear, right? Websites are dynamic. They live in the digital space. What's the risk if you change that button yellow for the next 24 hours just to see if it impacts things, right? This is the place that can be your playground, obviously within reason, but what's the fear in just mixing things up? So we're asking you to take a pledge with us that you're willing to try stuff over the next month and see what happens, see what <laughs> sticks and just innovate. Um, in fact, we put together a guidebook. So if you haven't grabbed this, Dana made this cool bit.ly little link, you can grab it. Um, we built this to go right along with our 10 tips um, hacks. And so you can literally work through this today. There's gonna be some things we're gonna do on this uh, webinar live, but also you can use this over the next couple of weeks as you kind of unpack it. And it can just be a guide. It's real easy to fill in and it makes you feel accomplished because you can actually check boxes. Any check box fans out oh there? Oh my gosh, that so like appeals to my type A-ness. Yes, thank you, you for putting those check boxes. You can feel really good about yourself. So please grab that. If you are watching this later, there's a link to download it off our website. And we'll share the slide deck so you'll have access to all of this, plus the freebies and the resources. So, okay, John's favorite <laughs> you, step Ashley. goal. Thank you, Ashley. Man, she is really gunning for that $25 <laughs> Amazon gift card. Good for you. Okay, number one, start with your goals. We start everywhere with trying to assert where are we going and asking ourselves the question of what do we want to accomplish? So ask yourself that. What is our big goal? And it doesn't have to be a big, hairy, audacious, we're trying to relaunch a website. We're trying to get an online giving portal up. It can be super simple. We want to get more donations. We want to grow our email list. We want to create volunteer opportunities. We want to get the word out for our event. Whatever it is, we, we're just here to tell you and to put a stake in the ground that goals need to be driving your strategy. And the best way to set up a goal is to go to your research, right, yeah, John? Yeah, totally. But everything we're gonna do, and you'll see this throughout, we kind of even flagged, what is the goal in this? Like you really wanna keep that key and it's gonna make you be able to see that movement that Dana talks about. We want at the end of the month you to feel like you've actually moved the needle in a goal that matters to you, not just a random goal. So, okay, know your numbers. This is the interactive portion if you have your worksheet out, so get ready for this. Google Analytics, okay? Start opening that in your browser because I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to find this. But a couple of things that you'd wanna know right away, how much money are you raising online? I think it's good to look at year from last year to this year in this month because a lot of times there's cyclical things in all of our organizations, but what's a typical February look like and how did it go this year? What's typical March and compare it to you know what you're gonna see this month. That's a good place to start, but just to have spill that tea. <laughs> I'm not hip enough to know what that means. Know what that I'm not means. cool. I'm in my 40s. So like, I just okay. turned 38. What is that? <laughs> Dana's dying. You're I muted. Uh, yeah, you're muted. We don't know what you're saying. This is amazing. <laughs> we'll keep okay, going. I love that you oh, just like, you are pop back. up. You're like a leprechaun. I feel this like is I'm coming into my, we've got someone in the uh, field. Come in, Dana. Spill the tea. Y'all, that means like you're sharing the inside scoop. You're telling them like what's really up. <laughs> I hate it when I'm not cool. There you go. So we're yeah. right. so we're going to spill this okay. tea. Is it an acronym? Is yeah. T-E-A an acronym? We're overthinking this. Okay, we're overthinking. Okay, back <laughs> to Google Analytics. <laughs> okay, so get out that worksheet. So we've got the online giving. You may need to figure that out in your database later today or sometime this week. That's something you want to put on the back burner to come back to. Google Analytics, let's look at this right now because we've got a couple screens that can help you. Now, if you listen to our podcast recently, we talked about this. Please don't get lost in Google Analytics. Don't get overwhelmed. Just getting in there, you are literally getting a huge high five from me because whatever you can measure, you can change, right? And so just by getting in there, getting comfortable with where the data is, 
your mind, if you've never been in before, is going to be a little bit exploded because you're like, I can't believe I can get all this information. But there's also no way you can actually take in all the information. So this is a huge place that you want to just look at some curated things so you don't get super overwhelmed. And that's what these next couple of slides are. And I want to make sure that people know the URL. It's analytics.google.com. So if you're not there right now, um, then please head over to that way, analytics.google.com. So keep going. You're doing great, John. You're welcome. Okay, so when you're in Google Analytics, what you're gonna look is you're gonna click on the left-hand sidebar, and this is gonna get you into digging down data. And you know, we talk about it a lot, data is great, but you have to look at it in context. And so it's really important that you're not just making you know, broad changes to your strategy if you don't really understand the data that you're looking at. For instance, we pulled in our web stats, so full disclosure, you can see what our bounce rate is right there in front of you. <laughs> but I wanted you to get this live because, you know, this is actually a roll up on the home page of all of your bounce rate across the entire site. That's actually the wrong way to look at bounce rate because if I look at that, which a bounce rate simply is just how many people came without going to another website left, or another page on your site, they left. So if you just look holistically at a number, you may have an impression that, man, we had 60% of our people bounce. Well, hold on to that because on the next slide, I'm gonna show you when you drill down page by page, it's really not as bad as it looks. Um, but here's the circled uh, areas that I really want you to pay attention to when you get into Google Analytics. How many users came to your site? How many sessions did they have? How many times did they come back within the period of time that you're looking? And then what was their average time? We look at this and we're like, that's amazing. We love that somebody spent three minutes of their time on average with us because we've got extensive show notes and we want to serve people. So the higher that average site time is a much better thing for us. We're obviously trying to build relationships and provide value to people. So we're trying to grow that site time. Your goals may be different, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. If you go in one step deeper, so you're going to click on behavior, site content, all pages. This is where you're going to get the by page um, stats. And this is what I really want you to look at. And the worksheet's going to ask for this too, is what are the page views that are getting the most traction? For us, it's the show notes. It's about the podcast. And you can see line by line where people are spending their time. And that's where you can start to make some associations of like, man, nobody is hanging out on, you know, whatever page, they all kind of look high right here, just the show notes page. So maybe I want to do something there because that's where I'm really putting my call to action. So I know I need to put a more engaging video or I need to try things to see if I can move that number over time. Again, you can see the bounce rate by page also. So you can see the blend of, we know our homepage, that top line where the slash is, is 42%. That's not too bad. That means 60% of the people are staying on our site and coming in further. So either way, once you track it, you can actually start to move things. So I just wanted to give you one last overview. Where's your traffic coming from? This is gonna be really important as you start to implement Dana's strategies over the next couple of weeks, but you can move this. This is the coolest thing about Google Analytics. You can move these things just by putting some intentionality around it. But this part of your website is just, or analytics is just talking about where is the traffic coming from? Where is an audience or a donor, prospective donor coming in from that? And you can see direct means they typed in weareforgood.com. Social means they came through one of our social media posts. Organic search, they're literally going to Google and typing in a search. And then a referral would be from a different website that's linked to us. So again, as you put emphasis on your social media, call to action, all of that, you're gonna see the social numbers grow. Um, and there's just going to be ways that you can kind of monitor that. Obviously, you can overlay that with how many people check out, how many online donations you get, and you can start to optimize. But again, start small, because even what I just shared probably is completely overwhelming to you, and that is okay, <laughs> because just getting in there is going to be a great place to start, so you can actually measure against it next month. And I want to say something about this really quickly. Oh, Dana's coming in. Welcome Come to our in. house, Dana. Come on in. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you know how in, in nonprofit, we're, our goal in life is to just make the donor the hero. This worksheet is trying to make you the hero. And that's what I think is so important about benchmarking data, getting this benchmark. And if you follow through with the next four weeks worth of um, these seminars and these classes, Fundraise Up is going to bring another element to this. Dana is going to just bring the heat with social. And so once you start making these little adjustments, I got, I got a shimmy from uh, Dana <laughs> out of that. Once you start making these little adjustments, you're going to see your Google analytics numbers just start to shift and start to climb 
climb. And what an amazing case for support that you're going to be able to give to your manager, to your executive director, even maybe to your board to talk about these little adjustments that we made on our website. This level of intentionality, to John's point, is actually going to shift the needle. So follow this, do the worksheet, do a little bit of the homework. We will make you the hero. That is the goal. Dana, go for it. I'm done talking. I love that. Ashley is killing it. Look at this. Well, the more you know about your donors, the more you can be the hero. Mic oh, my drop. God. <laughs> Woman after my own heart. Ashley, Ashley just take the gift card. Just please yeah. just give her the gift card right now. <laughs> um, Diana had a good question. Um, it says oh, Facebook awesome. user on here, but I can see her as Diana. Is there any sort of data around where the strongest traffic comes from? I mean, honestly, I don't know the answer specifically, but I'll tell you, I feel like everything is contextual to your organization because there's some organizations that are heavy social and there's some that are not that you may have this really cool network of, you know, chapters throughout the country, which may push your referral links up through the roof. So I don't, I mean, I think you could look at that, but I wouldn't hang your hat completely on it. I would just benchmark where you're at and, see what you can actually move. And social is one of those that you really can move by being really intentional about it. I mean, over time, the search engine stuff is going to catch up as people are looking for you in different ways. But I would just look at that and use your own baseline so you don't get stressed out. Our numbers may be really low compared to your website or they may be really high. So don't get stressed yeah. out about that. We're in a completely different industry, you know? Totally. And I would say on the screen that he's currently on where it says direct, social, organic, you can click into each of those. I don't know if you actually do this, but if you were to click on social, you can see which social channels specifically are driving that traffic. So for me, it was really interesting because I was spending a ton of time on Instagram, for example, but Instagram was actually my lowest channel providing website traffic. One of ours is too. Just yeah. Funny. So it's like you spend you so a ton of energy LinkedIn, in there. LinkedIn for us is like through the roof and it's like, oh, we should probably hang out more on LinkedIn. <laughs> right. So it probably provides you a lot of interesting nuggets there. So that, that was my only two cents. Continue. Thanks. I love it. Awesome. I really feel like you're the leprechaun that just appears. It's like, <laughs> makes my day. <laughs> she does. She's going to give gold. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're moving into step three, simplify and clarify your site. This is going to be so helpful. This is like taking out the trash. And I really think it's going to feel like a burden lifted for you because what we don't want is so many competing messages, so many uh, things that draw our eyeballs all around the website. We want to be incredibly clear with, with our goal in mind. If you have that at the top, you know, stage that site. Once a donor comes again, we use the house analogy. When someone comes into your house, can they get a feel of who you are, what you're about? Can they feel that connection to your mission? We want to take out all of the clutter and make it so frictionless that they can get to exactly what they want to get to um, with a lot of, again, intentionality. I feel like I need to just create that as a hashtag <laughs> for this intentionality with all of your digital presence. So and I think you just have to be thinking about where are they coming from? How are they interfacing with our website? You know, mobile is booming right now. And especially if you're if you're a mission that has a ton of Gen Zers, millennials, it's like they're probably going to be giving on their mobile site or on their mobile device. And you just have to find ways to just make it simple and easy. And then the last piece is, are you using the right call to action? And I'm here to tell you, if you have five calls to action on your homepage, way too many. And if you're wondering, how can I find the right call to action? What are the right words? Just hold on to your seats because we're about to give you a whole bunch of examples. We have a whole section dedicated to this. So thinking about your goal, what is your call to action? And I think some of the examples we want to share today are really powerful because it's completely counterintuitive to how you would have built a website a few years ago. If you're getting lasered into what your goal is, it's going to change everything because you really want to point people in that. Again, there's so much noise happening. How do you drive the traffic? So here's one example. I didn't actually think this was coming up so soon. Okay, we're going into the examples. This is wonderful. <laughs> okay, Charity Water. Sorry, this we, it's like a drinking game every time we talk about right good organizational websites. Charity Water is really bold here. Obviously, their goal, and if you look at the stats, they have moved so many millions of dollars onto monthly giving. Isn't it ironic that they're the, the organization that makes 30 plus million dollars a year in monthly giving, maybe 40 million now, this is the homepage. Like literally they're asking for a monthly gift within the first impression of it. You know what it is, you know why they need it, and you can literally click through to it. 
I think that's pretty fascinating. With each of these sites that we're going to show you, for examples too, for this little blue bubble, to just do a goal check. I literally don't know if this was their goal because I didn't call their marketing officer and ask, but I went through like the mindset of how, if I was setting up my website like this, what would my goal be? Because you would hate to just walk in and be like, just because Charity Water did this, this is what we need to do. That's like the epitome of what we wouldn't say to do, but to use you know, intelligence of what is your goal and build your site around what those goals are for your online traffic. And I'm going to give a little plug here just because Do I it. can, but this is our hummingbird moment. I'm going down the <laughs> rabbit trail. But if you're if you're someone that's really interested in how to get your mo your monthly giving up and online, we're actually going to have Vic Harrison oh, on yeah. the podcast. Um, and I think it's next month. And she, her husband started Charity Water and she's the one that built this monthly model. And she's going to help us walk through the philosophy behind that. So stay tuned. Thank you, Dana. She loves you. <laughs> she's amazing. I'm so psyched. Um, she's actually going to be a guest speaker on my mastermind. What? She is a force. Oh and she's if you're not following her on social, you will be inspired. So And by her home renovation projects because they're very impressive. Okay. <laughs> another rabbit trail. We're still going. Okay. Here's another one. Greenpeace. Um, I would assume their goal is to get people to sign petitions, to take action. This is really interesting, right? And it's very blurry. Sorry about that. But their call to action button was literally resist, which is behind my um, toggle screen. When that goes away, that little green button is Trump abandons Paris Climate Agreement. Resist. Mm -hmm. Don't you love that it literally was that you click that button to go do whatever the action is. It's so clear that whatever their main goal is, that's what they're doing. Okay, this is getting into an example less of like a call to action, I think, but just like the messaging. So think through this, but the gold check here, the Gates Foundation, obviously, they don't necessarily have a money problem. <laughs> they have, they just want people to get on board with these ideas that they are funding and all of these big initiatives. So I think their goal is to educate and grow advocacy. Look how much different their website is. So again, think through, you know, what your overarching metrics are and goals and then you can build around that. Um, with that in mind, we do really suggest when you're writing a call to action is use action words, create urgency, make it stand out, like neon green button on green piece. Like who doesn't want to click the resist button? You know, it's just like it draws I wanna you resist. in. I want to resist. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I want to be a the part Paris of it. Agreement so. at this point, but either way, <laughs> um, mix it up, see what works. This is where it's fun to just try things because I mean, why not try the button in a different place with nothing else on the homepage for a couple of weeks as you try some of these social media strategies and compare it to what you had last month. I mean, it's simple, but I do think that it's worthwhile to just kind of mix up. If you feel stuck, I can let you, I feel like I'm talking too much B. No, keep but, going, um, you're doing great. If you don't know where to start with a call to action, borrow one, right? These are not trademarked. Why not just um, go over here, our friends over at Firespring put together this cool list and we wanted to provide it to you too. But notice how they're action oriented. A lot of times they connect back to the impact, connect back to what you're trying to get somebody to do. You obviously don't want like a 20 word call to action. So it's as brief as it can be and points to what you're actually getting people to try to do. This, These are all listed in your worksheet too. So don't stress out if you're trying to jot a bunch of Yeah, don't down. write them all down. But I will say I, the thing that I like about these um, is what I am challenged by personally in life, which is it's really brief. And yeah. I'm a long winded per writer, speaker. And so this really cuts to the core of keeping it simple. I saw a comment that just came in about just keeping your website simple, focused. Um, and that's why I think these could be really powerful for you. If you don't have a place to start, these are just great placeholders for you. Test them out, try one one week, try another next week. So who knows how it'll perform. Okay, this favorite step. Let's settle in, this is Becky's favorite. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Becky's stepping up on her set soapbox. Choosing the right words and having a voice and a tone for your website, for your organization, and just digitally is so important. And we are really big believers in trying to humanize organizations. We are done with the time and the era of having this sort of buttoned up corporate robotic voice. And we want, when someone comes to your site, to 
feel like they're talking to a human, that they're not talking to an organization. And so, you know, we talk a lot about style guides. I mean, John does, he's a designer. I'm just happen to be the writer. And we talk about the graphic style guide and that's something that's very standard in organizations. But I am here to fight for the voice <laughs> style guide because I think it could be just as important. This is so important to uh, what somebody seeing Screen grab and like Matt, oh Jim, you're awesome. I don't know where you are in the world, but we need to be friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so really think about who you want to be. How do you speak? How do you interface? How do you create action from your words? How do you, my English teacher is dying inside as I say this, but maybe are they're not complete sentences, you know? Maybe we're using emojis. How do you keep it light and keep it relevant? We don't want to overwrite because web is so scannable and we want people who are scrolling to go through it very quickly. But I still think there are ways to capture this in a way that is heartfelt, that is humanizing, and it makes someone feel like you are speaking directly to them, that you, you're you needing them to come into your mission and be the difference. So I really want to encourage you to think about how you talk. And I have struggled with this, and I know John and I have been in organizations where um, you know, thousands of employees and, I mean, the corporate PC way of doing business, it just does not cut through mm -hmm. um, all of the noise that's in the world right now. So this is such an easy way to stand out. Give that megaphone to your the person who's the beneficiary of your mission. It doesn't have to be your voice every time and curate it from the people who are coming. Let them lend their voice. I could go on and on about this. But I love stop. that though. Thank you. Keep it brief though. <laughs> I feel like I always have to Not like up. I just explained. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know how you surf the web too. You scan it. You look at these average site times. People are not reading every word on your website. So really writing in bullets and writing in ways that makes it easily scannable with headings and stuff is so critical because if you want people to actually read it. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, My this is your part. jam. <laughs> Choose the right visuals. So you've got to have the right visual pairing with the words. And um Sorry, this is a little bit of my soapbox here. We are, or what do we have to sell as an organization, right? We're trying to sell our mission and our impact. So we need to use actual photos of people, you know? Um, it's so easy nowadays to grab, especially with like the beautiful um, Unsplash and there's so many really great stock photography sites now. In a lot of ways, it's hard to tell the difference in some instances, but you really, really want to use real people whenever you can. And the reason for that is because if you're, try, you know, we talk a lot about trying to build believers in your mission and not just donors, not passer buyers, but people that are rabid fans. If they're rabid fans and they see that that's a person that they know they specifically impacted, you throw a name on there, they recognize the name or they recognize the project that's been implemented. That does something deeply within somebody. And you're leaving money on the table. You're leaving engagement on the table. If you're not telling the stories of actual, tangible, physical things and people that have been impacted by your mission. And so you only have a couple seconds. So we think using the right visual or video is incredibly key. You should be investing in photography. If you don't have this on your team, if you don't, if you can't develop this on somebody on your team, we're big on professional development. So if you have somebody that's hungry to learn photography, send them to a photography class and pour into them because that is going to pay you back in dividends if you have somebody that can do this. But if you don't have any of those options, hire a photographer, get some incredible photography. It should be high res. It should be engaging. Eye contact matters. You know, people want to see people. People want to give to people. And so it's so critical that that is the type of photography that you use. We have a couple of like things to think through. If you're tempted to put the like ribbon cutting photo in front of the building. Or the don't. big that's check. So boring. The big please check don't. is actually like $500. And it's like, is it really <laughs> For a $200 check? donation. <laughs> <laughs> right. IRS it costs like $60 in foam. Don't use those kind of photos. I mean, you can put that on your news page. That's cool. The building opened, but use a human like experiencing the building. Use the girl that gets to hear through her cochlear implants in the new implant center. I mean, use the the emotion, the moment that you're creating through your impact. Go for a real overstock any chance you get. Um, there's probably somebody in the room that you are in a position that you have to use stock. You you have a very com you know confidential mission or the people you serve. Totally get that. And we bless and release you. We you bless, are bless and release yeah, you. you, can do what you but need again, to do. pick photos that look natural, though. You know, don't get the cheesy 
average, I can say 40 year old white guy with the coffee mug. Don't get that kind of stock photography unless you're trying to make a meme. And then please do use that. It it's sounds like fun. Michael Scott. That's what it I visualized like right Scott. there. Yep. I love the office. Oh, okay. Great examples. Okay. Just a few examples and then I'll show people lined up. The reason I wanted to show you this example is because this site, I didn't love the banner that they had at the top. This is room to read, but I loved how their website leveraged storytelling down the front and imagery. And these are people that are beneficiaries of this reading organization. So imagine as you scroll down, see that line that just follows you. You're educating somebody. It's connecting to people that are impacted. It's showing the impact and it leads to literally the donation page. And this is just a couple flicks, but I loved just the simplicity of this. And imagine if these were just stock photos, it wouldn't have the same feel, you know, just the, uh, the edge that you have when you have something that's raw and real, you can tell the difference and your donors can tell the difference. Um, so just love this example. And just like seeing all those little faces on there, like get something like emotionally to me know, and makes right? you want to give. So I really like, it's almost like unveiling a chapter and you're leading mm -hmm. them on a little bit of a story or a journey there. And I love it's ending and giving, and yeah. it would be incumbent upon you if they give to just steward the heck out of them after that experience, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so too. we're getting into step seven optimize your giving pages. Who has not updated their giving online giving pages on their website in many years? And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like that was <laughs> us at our former healthcare organization. And the reality is, is the world in the digital space is changing all the time. I mean, we're in a world of Bitcoin right? now where you can actually give Bitcoin, gift Bitcoin to organizations. <laughs> so in just with the advantages of Apple Pay and, um, you know, something Venmo. like Venmo or something like that, it really is telling you that you've got to do more than just take credit cards or maybe sync to PayPal. So, you know, stay tuned because Fundraise Up is going to go into how to leverage the online giving portion of your website. And we're just here to say, let's do some housekeeping before you start optimizing those pages. Connect with that call to action that goes straight to the giving page because we want things to be simple. When Dana was on our podcast, I thought one of the greatest tips that she gave was if you can't find somebody's mission statement in like one or two clicks, it's buried. These are the things that need to be lifted up and we need to make them so quick and easy because again, if it's frictionless, they're going to stay longer. They might meander to other parts of your site. So have that ease of use, have a diversified uh, toolbox of different payment methods. And if you're not sure, pull your people, <laughs> ask them, <laughs> ask them, because you don't need to have every payment option on there, just in the same way you don't need to be on every social media platform. So find the one that works for you, fight for it a little bit, because your ops person's going to push back on you a little bit, because they don't like, those ops people love them, but they don't typically like change, they like their structures, but we've got to be able to meet donors in the space where they are in a way that they want to interact with us. So, and then just provide incredible customer service service for them so they can connect with you if they have issues or if they have questions. I love it. And you know, the, we live in a different world now. And I know some of you guys probably are, feel like you're stuck in like a contract with online giving. I know that's how we felt when yeah. we were in healthcare. It's these behemoth organizations that lock you into multi-year contracts, probably get a show of hands on that. The thing is fundraise up is going to come in and completely blow your mind with what they can provide for free as an option, but also our friends at give butter, have a completely oh, free platform. And so answer. I just say, if you feel stuck, just open up one of these free accounts and, and do a campaign through that because they're gonna give you a lot more flexibility to customize, integrate some of these progressive payment models and start there. You don't have to like abandon your processor forever, but you could run a campaign through there and just see what happens, you know? Again, be try be willing to try stuff. Yeah, and Give Butter is the only platform that's doing like some crowdfunding that has Venmo connectivity yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. So, and we love them. So I guess we're gonna give them a shameless plug. Totally agree. What are your thoughts on pop-ups asking for donations on the homepage? What do you think, B? I love it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if that is your goal, I think it just goes back to that very first goal. If that is what you're trying to do, I mean, I don't know that I would say we need a donation. I think you could say it in such a creative way. We're working to help send 20 girls in Ghana to school this year. Can you help us fund, you know, a month of scholarship or something like that? 
quick call to action. I mean, I don't, that was probably too many words given, but you know, it's me again. So very <laughs> verbose, but I think you understand that. I think it's completely fine. If that aligns with your goals, then I'm completely fine with it. And I don't even think it's as in your face as a lot of people do, because that's your goal. I agree. I think if there's a super big urgency around COVID or end of year, or you have a matching gift, like use the pop-ups. I mean, I think feel like that feels like an urgent thing, but day to day, you know, I think Dana would probably agree with this too. I'd love to hear what you think D um, is that so much of, I feel like the goal needs to be trying to get an email address because the overall, you could have 2000 people visit your website and maybe get like four gifts or whatever. I don't know what your conversion rate would be, but it, you could maybe get a hundred email addresses, you know, if you really play with that form and optimize that. So I would probably say that cause it's the lower hanging fruit and then you can stay in touch and do follow up sequences and stuff like that. Yeah, I would say both. Um, I think it's interesting with the pop-ups where you can change them all the time, right? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be the same thing consistently. Um, mm -hmm. But I think if it is something that's within the moment that makes sense, that's like a campaign, that's a very relevant, urgent thing, then yes. Otherwise, I think email all day. I know I'm a social marketer, like social media marketer, but even you see significantly more engagement and response in an email because you're opting into that versus a social media post where your content's not seen all the time. So 100% agree with emails. I, I, I'm going to die on that hill with you because <laughs> I mean, if you, if you're struggling with what is my goal, I'm not sure what we want to do. That would be a really easy softball first step is to try to do some acquisition on email. Can you give them something? Can you lock them into your newsletter? Can you give them access to um, something, some benefit that your uh, nonprofit provides? But because Dana's right, I mean, those social media sites and platforms are not evergreen. They could go away in an instant. Yep. What would happen to all of your followers? So really trying to get somebody to almost like walk in the front door and say, I wanna be a part of what's happening in this space is really key. So so if you're having trouble with finding your first goal, I would start there. And I love Molly's question kind of ties right into that. And mm -hmm. I think Molly, this goes back to, I think it was maybe your first or second step around your prioritizing your goals. And I think it's just that, right? What do you, what do you want? The homepage is usually your highest trafficked page. So what do you want people to do on that homepage? Is it an email? Is it a donate? Is it signing something? Is it, and, and again, that can change. Yeah. And the cool thing is too, I mean, nowadays you can, if you're using something like Squarespace, I don't know what platform, probably like WordPress too. I don't use WordPress a ton, but standing up a landing page is really straightforward. You know, mm -hmm. so if you're creating a campaign, like Dana's going to say, you can direct traffic to a landing page and you're not having to take over your entire homepage, but you could still really work on that conversion going up by just pointing traffic. Like if you go to our website and click the uh, the worksheet download guide, we're going to direct you to a landing page to download that. Because I'm afraid if I send you to my homepage, there's a lot of different places you could go. You go to the podcast or you see this song and dance. But if we send you to We Are For Good slash website, it's a landing page where the only option is you want that free PDF. So you're going to click add my email address. Or it at is least like a targeted message. Will. You are literally targeting people exactly where they want to go. And it is so kind to do that for someone. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have to sift through all the crap <laughs> that's totally. on our website. We want to get what we want to get and we want to get out. We have busy yes. lives. So I love and that. don't throw a fit. <laughs> <laughs> that I said crap, you said fit. Great. Okay, okay gather feedback. Um, this is kind of speaking to, this is going to happen beyond just the next couple of weeks, but just getting in this posture and we're really big on like mindsets. If you listen to the podcast, but how are you like receiving feedback? How are you questioning, rethinking, re-questioning different aspects of your business? Because with the website, it's dynamic, it's changing, technology is changing, people are changing all of the above. So you've got to be filled with other opinions than just your staff. And I think it's easy to fall into, especially a big organization or a small organization. You ask the team, like, what do they think of the site? Oh, I don't like the homepage. Okay. Are they even a target customer or donor for you? You know, have, when's the last time you sat down with somebody that's not connected to the mission and watch them interact with the website? That's just like a simple thing you can do next time you are on vacation 
watch like an older person in your family go to your website and watch what they do. Like it's hilarious, you know, because it's like secret shoppers. It's that totally like shopper secret shopping. It's easy yeah. to do because you just want to see what makes people click, what doesn't make people click. And it needs to be people that are removed from the mission, but also it's a commitment to asking for feedback anywhere that you're already doing that. You can put together just a website poll if you wanted to do something like that on social or to your email list. But if you already do a communication survey or a donor survey in an annual basis, put some questions about the website in there too, because you're just kind of getting in this posture of like, it's not a fixed asset. It is like a dynamic changing asset. And we want to just, keep improving on it, you know? So it doesn't need to be a hill to die on. And thank you, Lisa, for that nice comment. That was so nice, Lisa. I know, it was like you. a little mom pat on the back there. I can't multitask, so it really stresses me out when something pops up, you know? <laughs> I, <laughs> like, can, I can't, but I'm a woman, so, oh, I feel like that was a dig to you. That was such a that. big. Okay, oh, sorry. sorry. Am I killing yeah. you over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. We're not okay. having any fun whatsoever. I don't know no. if you guys can tell that. Okay. Now this is going to be a mind shift for you. So step nine is create a freebie. And the reason this is so disruptive is because I think traditionally people think that they're coming to a nonprofit to give something. And what a disruptive hack to give something back to them, to give them a reason to stay, to give them a reason to stick around. And so we think you need to consider where can you add value to the people who are coming to your site? They could be donors, they could be prospects, um, they could be community partners. What is something that you can offer to them um, that's sort of like a value add prop? And I would even say you should absolutely tie the price of admission for getting this freebie is an email address. So if they wanna get the freebie, get an email address. I mean, that is so transactional, but in a way that we can put them sort of into our funnel and we can have all this meaningful communication with them from there. So leverage that core expertise and do something that's just helpful, that's kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love freebies and we love really easy, um, actionable freebies that can step-by-step -step walk someone through this. I mean, I think the uh, guide that John put together today for this class is a great example of that, but how can you leverage your mission um, to do something really impactful that adds value to your users? So, um, and I love that- So it's like, if yeah. you're a humane society, it's like, what's the, what's the first 30, things to do when you bring your pet home, stuff like that, like a guide mm -hmm. that just engages your audience around your ex expertise. So it further strengthens this relationship and it gives you a reason to keep talking to them, like it gives you their email address. So think about that for whatever you I love is. that example. Good job, John. Okay, perfect. Okay, step 10, Dana didn't ask us to put this, but we're basically saying hire Dana because she's awesome. Hire but somebody if you, if you have Dana, the budget. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like websites and online media, it is weird, very much growth mindset. You can learn anything that you really want to put your mind to. We really do believe that. But if this is just not your bailiwick and you're an executive director and you're out raising money on the front lines, you may need to hire a digital strategist to help you do this. And that's okay. Like it's worth the investment because it's so important. And I think that's what, you know, our point here would be is that start looking at it as an asset that you're investing in, that you're optimizing, that you're looking at. And it's not just, it's not a one and done thing. Um, so yeah, find a professional that knows what they're doing, that can help you make sense of the data and help you translate into results if you need it. Otherwise just get on Google, get on YouTube and learn, be a sponge, listen to podcasts. Um, everywhere there's information these days to just help grow and develop you. So, totally. and I really think like having a hire, guide, <laughs> hire advice. Dana, good advice and hire Jim to do your photography. Yes. Um, I just think it will, it would help give you some breathing room, especially if you're struggling with where to start, how to approach this. Someone that can look at it from a macro level is going to be able to guide your ship for, you know, even if it's six months, stand up structure and practices. And I just have to give a shout out because my heart is exploding. Yes. You probably haven't seen this because <laughs> you were talking and you don't want to multitask, but there were so many awesome examples of freebies that people have given away. I saw cards made by kids, um, coupons for a dog rescue. Um, there was another one. I can't remember what it was, but that the second one that came in was so good too. So I'm just like I giving everybody, I don't have Group the zoom emoji sort of where strong. I can put like the little clapping hands on this, but great job, everybody. <laughs> you can actually clap your hands. Oh, that's right. I can clap my it's hands. Amazing. It's video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you need more help, this is kind of wrapping down 
or at least this piece and we can move into questions. We do have a workshop on content syndication. This is really helpful if you're trying to figure out what to talk about a lot. Um, you know, and taking pieces of content that already exists and finding a lot of different ways to leverage it. That's over at workshops. But also got to plug our community. So we've seen some friends from our community in this. I live. know. I'm so glad you guys are here. Come hang out. Like we just created this place because we wanted a place that was kind of independent of somebody trying to sell you anything. And you can just share ideas, meet new friends in the sector and just stay inspired. Um, we have a lot of times our guests from the podcast come in and do Q and A's in there, but we just launched it pretty recently. So yeah, it's like two weeks old. It's completely yeah. free. We, we really didn't want, want anything that. behind a paywall where somebody like had to join an association. <laughs> you can literally come in to a space with people who are incredibly kind, incredibly knowledgeable and just talk shop. Um, and it's a great place to lift people up. So yeah, you're awesome. Little, okay. Plug. There's, we've already done that. Okay. Questions, anything? Hit us. We're ready. <laughs> You guys are amazing. There's a little bit of a, that was fire y'all, by the way. There was, <laughs> I was trying to keep up with the questions. Are we spilling the tea? <laughs> You're spilling oh, the tea. You spilled all the, the green tea. tea. is keeping us green relevant. Tea. It's very relevant oh, I do for like green tea. Yes. It is great. Oh, it's so smart. I want to do a, like yellow. Can we talk about that? I want to do a challenge <laughs> with, you guys started off talking about Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. And I would love for during from now to next week for everybody who joined, I think, John, what was your, can you go back to, it was one of your beginning slides about. I'm going to like go into it. I was going to say, if you are <laughs> Sorry, epileptic, close your eyes, epileptic, please. Your eyes, okay. um, was there one right before? Okay, this one. Yes. Okay. So on yeah. your worksheet, which is amazing. Um, there is an area right here where it's, he says, how many users come to your website? How many came last month? The average time. And if you can list the amount of donations you received online last month. So really, I would say focus on the two of what was your website traffic last month total. So you would at the top go from February 1st to February 28th, not a leap year. <laughs> and yeah. then your online donations. And the goal is by the end of this month for those two numbers to increase if you implement some of these small tips that we're talking about. So if you feel like putting it in the Facebook group for some accountability, please list those numbers in the Facebook group or on this video right here. And we will hold all of us accountable. Um, I will definitely go onto your website. I don't know if John and Becky have free time, but I will go on your website after you make those changes. Or if you're thinking of making a change and give some feedback, but we want this to be like, not just that you listen to this amazing presentation today, but you actually put things into value or into action that creates value. And I'm going to well, have to mother really here too. too. Like yeah. I want to mother people here and say that it, it, don't be ashamed if your numbers are low because you may have never looked at Google analytics ever. And so the, the point yeah. is that you, Oh my Aww. gosh. I don't know who you are, Facebook user, because I can't see your name, but thank you for being a good human. I'm sorry, I'm back to emoting. Diana. So if, if you're feeling bad about your numbers, it doesn't matter what your starting point is. It only matters what, what it looks like 30 days down the line. Mm -hmm. So think about how to make these small adjustments. I really hope this guide is helpful for you to go step by step. Um, and if this class and this style works for you for teaching. Um, yeah, go check out our workshops because we break down syndication content, which I didn't know what content syndication was probably a year ago. Um, and just taking micro content, content bursts and putting in different places. Um, and we'll walk you through that too. So we're just really passionate about this space and we just want to help you all do more for your mission. You have incredible causes. Um, it's a really uh, trying time in the world, but I just feel like it's digital's coming out party. And so this is your time to lean into it and that's it i'll do the 80s arsenio hall up oh, wrong arm okay great. um Digital's finally yeah. getting the credit it deserves when it's I, been i'm yeah. telling you it took a quarantine to get us all focused on digital talk on our computers yes and i'm just so glad that you're here that you because you really did take the first step so it's not a ton of homework. Just do a little bit of research on where you are right now. And then Nick is just going to up the ante, I think, next week. Oh, my gosh. Of what is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. I, I told you that I was going to be writing your names out, and I did not lie. I literally, as 
much as I could keep up with comments, I was right. He's the, the multitasking. You quit the everybody's names on a wheel of fortune board. <laughs> so this is big so money, that big money. <laughs> okay. everyone knows that I'm not lying when I say that this is random. <laughs> So, is everybody ready for the spin? <laughs> I'm ready, and I don't even think I'm on it. I'm so excited. I, recover, wait, I yes. do. I should totally put, wait, John and Becky. No, 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 no. Absolutely no. not. No. <laughs> They're like, fine, they don't agree. Okay, I did see, I did just see, hold on, McKaylin, you just commented, I think, again. Nice. I might have put you this wrong name, but I apologize. What's up, McKaylin? Okay, here we go. Ready? Three, two. <laughs> Did we talk about how much fun whimsy is? <laughs> whimsy and fun. The I winner is? Have, should have put a bankrupt. <laughs> Michael. Michael R. Michael R. Confetti. <laughs> we have a winner. Michael <laughs> asked actually a really great, great question earlier. Michael R., are you still here? Jim goes, what a fortune. Yeah. Everybody goes, common, common, common. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, Michael R., I am writing you down. Are you here? Comments. Let us know. And I'm going to keep talking because sometimes there's a delay. Every week, there's going to be a surprise. And I'm going to let you know they get better and better and better every single what? week. So <laughs> join and us. Car. She's going to be Oprah yeah. on the last episode. Everybody's going to get a Everybody car. Everybody gets yes. a car. <laughs> okay. like the new version of Oprah. There's going to be a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Electric car. Great. <laughs> um, I love it. Um, no, but for real, Michael, if you're here, if you're not, I will follow up with you afterwards. This has been incredible. You guys are amazing. Um, John and Becky, they are here. They are in the group. Go share some love on them. Um, we want to hang with you. What and was that? For questions. We want to hang with you. So yeah, comment. We're on. We're in Facebook. Yeah. So comment if you're if you run into problems this week, just drop them in the group Facebook, and we can address them. So. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like my brother has another mother. I can tell already. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wait, let me see this. Oh, yes, he is here. He's like, I think that might be me. Yes, that is you. Michael is here. Michael. Hi, Michael. Congrats. What Today's are you going to buy day. on Amazon? <laughs> I love it. Michael, thank you for being here. I will follow up with you. Um, John and Becky, you're incredible. All of you, make sure, please do not forget to download that worksheet. Download the worksheet. Download the worksheet. Fill it out because this is going to follow you all the way through the challenge. Um, and then next week we'll be back same time, same place with Nick from fundraise up. So work on integrating some of these changes. Um, and then we'll see you next week to learn about fundraise up. We're rooting Ooh. for you guys. Go get it. We're going to clap you out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slow clap. Slow clap you out. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, first of all, how incredible are they? This is amazing. Thank you all so much. Yes, I'm seeing all of the congratulations to Michael R. Yes, I love it. We're a very supportive community. Um, again, this is for you. So if you have questions throughout the week, we are here. This is what Facebook community and groups are for, is to serve each other, um, lift each other up. They, I mean, I don't know, troubleshoot, talk about some challenges, be frustrated, whatever. It, it all can happen here. We want this to be super real. Um, remind us where to find the worksheet. The worksheet is, let me see if I can put it in the comments again. It's living in the comment section, but you know what I'll do? I'll update the post afterwards and put it in the post. But for right now, I just put it again into the comment section. So the link is there. I think that's the most fun I've ever had in a video training. Stacy. yes, you rock. Awesome. Cool. With that, I will give you all back your Wednesday afternoon and we'll see you here next week. Thanks everybody.